Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Woo. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about that's come out of our work with Kiss the Ground is the difference in an environment that is taken care of from the perspective of the soil. And I'm going to echo a lot of things. How many p people saw Connor Jones speak earlier? So I will echo some of what Connor says. We're very much in alignment in our thinking. Ojai is in a unique position. Those of you who lived through the Thomas Fire know that. Largest wildfire in California's history. And part of that is cyclical. People will say, well, this happens every 20 or 30 years. And it does. The chaparral burns every 20 or 30 years. But as we've gone through the process of making the Kiss the Ground movie and the Kiss the Ground book, we've gotten a tremendous amount of information from NASA. And tomorrow evening from 3 to 6 p.m. at Azu, it's a free event, I'll be showing a lot of those models and animations. But one of the most important NASA animations shows a timeline that we are going to live through those of us in Southern California, and specifically in Ojai. And it's a model that they did in the late 90s. And essentially what it shows is the incidence and likelihood of wildfires. And the likelihood of wildfires goes way down for the period of time that we've been living in. And then starting about now, the incidence of wildfires goes way up in the model. That model was done in the 1990s. They've updated it with satellite imagery, with other models, and the predictive modeling is very accurate. The incidence of wildfires, especially in Southern California, is predicted to increase by 25% in the next 10 years, and then another 25%. Essentially, by 2100, the predictive modeling is that this area will be unlivable. That's by NASA, not by me. So that's the bad news. That's, that's very dire, very awful news. And what climate scientists will tell us is, well, as we have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the livability will go down because it will get hotter, right? And what are we to do? Use better light bulbs, not drive SUVs, ride our bikes, get solar. All of those are good measures. But none of those will reduce the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, nor will they save, save these guys. Here's my son, Jedi. Come here, buddy. That's mama. That's mama. Yeah. So the real question is, if we look forward past 10 years, 20 years, into the lifetime of... How many folks here have kids? So you guys are vested in the future. How many of you would like your kids to live in a healthy and happy Ojai for 10 to 20 years in the future? Yes. All of us, right? So walking is great. Uh, really, we have to begin to look at how do we beat the predictions? Because I could talk to you about the models and the satellite data, and the information is very convincing moving forward, and it's not hopeful. And I could say to you, reduce your carbon emissions, and you will know inherently that you reducing your carbon emissions will not change what's called the legacy load of carbon. You see, from 1750, from the birth of the Industrial Revolution to today, we've put about a thousand billion tons, a thousand gigatons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, by all means, put solar on your house, but that's not going to reduce the legacy load of carbon that's already in the atmosphere. So there are two problems, and we exist in Ojai at the confluence of these two problems. There is luckily one solution for both problems. The two problems that we exist in the confluence of are hotter temperatures, which means drier soil, a drier climate, more prone to fires. That's the first problem. But the second problem is the one that has eluded us and continues to elude us. And you can see it because you can look at the way we're managing our soil and the way we're managing our water. And it's obvious we don't understand the mechanism by which things like fires occur. That mechanism
mechanism has everything to do with something called the small water cycle or the short water cycle. So in school, we're taught about the big water cycle, how evaporation happens in the ocean, clouds go over mountains, and then we have rain. That's how we get about 50% of our precipitation in Ojai. So where does the other 50% come from? Who can tell me? Where does 50% of the water that we need to live in this valley come from? Watershed. Watershed, good. Not Lake Casitas, no. What is it? What is it in the watershed that creates the water that is precipitation? Evaporation is close. Transpiration. Transpiration is the water that moves through trees, through plants, through organic living organisms. So, if we are going to live in Ojai ongoingly for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, into our lifetimes of our children's, we need to reestablish the small water cycle. The small water cycle occurs through evapotranspiration. It occurs through plants. It does not occur where you see bare soil. It does not occur where soil is tilled. It does not occur where you see massive monocrops, even of the trees that we have in Ojai, the citrus, the avocados. When you look between those crops, if you see bare dirt, there's no evapotranspiration happening. And you can see evapotranspiration happen because when we do get the large water cycle, when we do get the coastal, the coastal water that literally comes from the eddies that come from the ocean, we just get a little sliver of that in Ojai. When that deluge is Ojai, we have the small, small water cycle that will continue for two or three weeks. We see the mists and the fogs and the dews. In those two, two or three weeks, they're really strong and then it peters out, and it peters out, and it peters out, because the valley doesn't have enough soil organic matter and enough life above the soil to continue the cycle. So how do we fix the two pieces of the cycle? The higher temperatures and the lessening of the small water cycle. And the answer is the same for both. It is to take care of the soil. And we do that through regenerative agriculture, which is something that Connor just be somebody loves regenerative agriculture back there. Yes, one fan. <laughs> something that Connor began to touch on. But it's a it's a reframing of how we manage our water and our crops and even our parklands. In terms of our water, that water that is so precious for us that's in Lake Casitas. It doesn't make sense to sell that water into the fracking industry, to use that water for fracking, and then it leaves our valley, it turns into produced water, it gets injected into wells. What makes sense is just to sustain agriculture that is cover crops. Those cover crops would be where the barren soil is between the things that are growing. And you can see that in some areas of Ojai. We have spontaneous cover crops, but then we let them oxidize and they die, and the same cycle will continue. You can even see it on the mountains right now, that greening, that beautiful greening that's happening. There is a way to sustain that and to keep it going. So part of it's water management, part of it's management of what's growing on the soil now, and part of it's just management of the soil itself. But again, it's all management. And we tend to get in this mindset like, oh, we don't want to be invasive. We don't want to invade the, the watershed. We don't want to change the watershed. I got news for you. We've been changing the watershed since Europeans showed up. So there are two types of management. There's unconscious management, which is largely what we've been doing, and conscious management, which is about what Kiss the Ground is about. How do we work with native and non-native species to create a small water cycle in which we restore the 50% of the water that we're losing? We see that that has been done in other places, the largest example of which, and I'll show this tomorrow in the presentation of Azu. It's free, by the way, from 3 to 6 p.m. You guys should all come. We're going to show these images and these graphics, but the largest example of this is in the lowest plateau in China. Imagine an area the size of Texas, 
or France that was dry, barren, and rocky, like Ojai will look in 10 or 20 or 30 years, according to NASA, if we do nothing. Over a period of three decades, that was restored to a lush ecosystem, a thriving ecosystem, a green place the size of Texas, 250,000 square miles. So that's the, one of the largest examples we have of a complete regeneration of an ecosystem. As you regenerate the water cycle, you regenerate the species. As you regenerate carbon in the soil, you regenerate water. As you regenerate water, you regenerate carbon, and everything follows. And so if we want to sustain Ojai in the long run, if we want an actionable set of standards and plans, the solution does exist. It's reasonably elegant. And it is the same solution as we have on a macro level for the United States and for the world for mitigating carbon emissions. That legacy load of carbon that's in the atmosphere won't come out of the atmosphere because of solar panels. We may mitigate emissions, we may mitigate the increase in the legacy load, but the only place and the only mechanism that we have long term for moving carbon from the atmosphere is the soil. And when we put carbon in the soil, guess what follows? Water. So as soil holds moisture, evapotranspiration happens, the temperature, the average temperature of a given area is stabilized. It's not these huge swings that we see, these 110 degree days in the summer, these freezing days in the winter. You find a more moderate middle ground. And so that's what's available to us in Ojai. That's the future that we can live into. I'm not committed to the NASA models. The data is critical because it shows us what will happen if we do nothing. What I'm committed to, and what I think is important that we as a community begin to look at, is how do we buck the system? How do we re-engineer, not through hard science of injecting glyphosate and Roundup to kill are weeds. How do we work with native and non-native species to restore an ecosystem that will sustain a temperature balance and will also be resilient to fires and mudslides? That's the question. It can be done. We've studied this. Our, our community, our small group, the Kiss the Ground community, has over 10 years of research in this area. The book, Kiss the Ground, if you'd like a copy today, we just have a couple of copies. Where's my wife? Somewhere back here. Just put your hand up. Back there. She's got a couple of copies of the book if you want the book. Tomorrow at Azu from 3 to 6 p.m., we'll expand on this plan, and I'll really show you graphically how this can be done. It is stunning. It is elegant. It is simple. It involves a breakthrough, not in what we're doing, but in how we're thinking. And the doing will follow. So that is what is available if we, as Rumi said, kiss the ground. Thank you guys so much. Have a great Earth Day.